So let's talk about, you know, like patches that you can't deploy through Kaseya. Because every so often, you know, we get a we get a little message that, um, you know, it, it, it says, you know, has to be uh, has to be applied like like manual. I mean, why, why would we have a manual install only? You see that once in a while. And how well, often the manual it? installs are things like, you know, Windows Genuine Advantage tool. And those are things that I assume for legal reasons, the end user actually has to click on agree to a pop up screen. So there, there are um, things that just can't, they, they require user interaction, so there's just no easy way to mass, you know, push them out. Um, you can't add switches to it and have it installed right. automatically. Okay. So, so those, some of those you would go to Microsoft and download and, you know, install them manually. Okay. So you'd have to kind of touch, if you needed that patch installed, you'd have to literally touch each machine in order to install it. Or, you know, potentially sometimes there's a script, you know, we can look and see if there's any way to script, you know, the, the thing to install. I remember we had like a .NET, I think, at one point, like 3.5, remember that? It, it couldn't be installed yep. through Kaseya, but we found a script to do it. Um, what about, um, you see, superseded, they're, they're highlighted in yellow. What, what are superseded patches? Superseded patch, you'll have the patch number, and then below it in yellow, it'll say superseded by this patch. Now, that normally is a service pack, because often service packs are all the updates since the last service pack you know, rolled up into the service pack. So you'll see KB123, and then underneath it will say superseded by, you know, KB456, which is service pack 3 for that um, machine. Now, super, the, what it, in, the superseded patch in yellow means that if you install that patch, you won't need the patch above it. Gotcha. So okay. KB123 doesn't need to be installed if you go ahead and install the superseded patch, you know, KB456. So basically, once you install this, the one that it says supersedes and it runs another patch scan, then basically that, the superseded will go away. Exactly. And if you, again, we, we deny service packs in, uh, in VA, so you may see a lot of these as missing patches. You can just kind of jump over the whole process and manually deploy the uh, service, pack, service pack, put that in there, and they'll all disappear. Right. So, um, guys, for, for, um, go ahead. Uh, one of the guys mentioned that we, you don't, they don't, we can't see any of the yellow links or whatever you guys were mentioning. Just the now, yellow? I was answering a question, so the I yellow didn't, links. I wasn't the last sentence. Um, you talking about still the, looking at the slideshow? So you're still right. Where, you like what's up right now is manual install only and superseded patches. That's where you want to be, right? Yeah, I don't think. What What do we? Um, I don't think we missed anything. Oh, yellow. No, I'm sorry. What I was talking about is, is um, and I don't think I have any to, is to show you, would probably would have been good to, when you go and look at your, your patches, um, often you will see in the patch list, it'll, it'll be underneath it, it'll, it'll, be, it'll be highlighted in yellow, and it'll say superseded by KB123456, and that's what I'm talking about. When, when you look in your own logs and you look at your own patches, that's, that's what we meant by yellow. Sorry. All right, cool. Sorry about that. Thanks. No, no, that's a good clarification. Sorry, I wasn't thinking. I should have, you know, hindsight, probably should have done a screenshot of one. Um, I didn't have any on, on the little sample system here, but I should have pulled one in, so I apologize. Um, all right, and then uh, we also have... Um, oh, so, whoops, did I go too far? Uh, yeah, we did man so we did manual, we did the superseded. What about uh, you know, I guess we already talked about this, right? How to manually apply Same patches process. like service packs, yep. right? Yep. So you can push them through. And I think uh, what I was going to say um, before Dan jumped in is uh, just for for those of you that are still on either the the old version 5 or K2 is that and, and Jim alluded to this several times, I just want to make sure it's clear is we don't approve service packs, Windows service packs. Um so you always need to apply your own Windows service packs, you know, and, and we also don't approve like, you know, the, the optional software like Silverlight or Search or IE7, IE8, you know, we won't approve IE9, anything that, that we, you know, we think is, is new software does not get pushed out, you need to push that out yourself um, in order to do that. All right. Those of you on SAS, again, you have full control, so you decide when the, you know, what you want to approve and what you don't want to approve. Okay. So I think we got, you know, we talked about how to, how to, you know, do the normal patches. Here's some exceptions that might happen, um, you know, through manual install and, and superseded patches. But what happens when things don't work, you know? 
what happens when when you know we have a problem so we try to come up with some kind of some troubleshooting steps here that you you know to go through um, if you're having problems with patch management the first thing to do is go back and look at the four steps are you scanning your machines are they getting scanned you know if the machines turned off and it's not getting scanned the process is going to fail um, are you actually patching you know again is there a skip offline on there so that therefore the machines always turned offline it's not going to get patched so check you know check in and make sure that you've got the fourth that well at least the, the first three set and even the reboot is important because obviously a lot of patches can't continue until the reboot happens um, checking credentials okay um, let's see maybe we point that out real quick here Jim um, over on the um, is it on patch agent oh, well, patch hey, status is patch yeah. status yeah yeah so under patch management patch status and there is a credential you know it'll tell you whether um, the the test the, well this is the test the the test of whether or not like the whole patch can be unpacked and everything right is that what the test results are here yeah it actually is more i mean the one of the agents that credentials page that you just just right. we'll test base credential I mean that that does a basic test of the credentials, and this one does more because this actually sees whether or not the credentials have the permissions to access the internet, download something to the temp directory. So it's a, it's a better right. test. So the idea you're, you're never going to have a case where it passes here and fails and set credentials because this is this is that and more. Okay. So so the first thing you need to do is I mean for those of you who haven't done this again you know go to your set credential. It's on the agent tab. It's down near the bottom. It's called set credential. And you need to go in here and you should set these. Typically, the, the domain administrator is the basic credential, assuming it's on a domain. And you'll go in there and put, you know, administrator, password, password, and you'll tell it to use the machine's current domain. Um, if you have a standard credential that you use across all your clients, you could put, you know, let's say we have a, um, you know, VA admin or whatever, you know, uh, account. Um, we could put the password in the password and then tell it to use um, the, the local domain but we could apply it to our templates and therefore it doesn't matter what their domain is it'll use those same credentials but if they're not a domain member then you need to use a local account you need to put the local administrator in there even if it's the user's name and password but somebody that has local administrative rights to the machine okay we've so we've written a script that can hide we, an admin account right yeah so you could create your own you could go into um, this is kind of crazy um, we're, we're kind of control. going off topic here a little bit but Sorry about under that. the remote control it's a great question under the remote control tab under reset password you do have the ability to you know create your own administrative accounts so you can go in here and create the you know a, you know ABC admin account and say, hey, yeah, let's create a new account, give it the secret password, and tell it to go create that account on all these machines, and hit apply. Now, one thing like Windows Vista, I mean, you, you could create it like Windows Vista won't let you reset the password on like an administrator account because it disables it by default. But most of the other operating systems allow you to just reset the administrator password. But if you want to use your own, you could create it. Now, the problem with what Dan was talking about is, hey, once you create it, if they're using the welcome screen, now it shows up as another choice. So there's another script that you have to run to kind of hide that from the welcome screen. But then what you, when you set that up, you use that credential over on the agent tab under set credentials and make sure that that, that is the credential. All right. And credentials are important to Kaseya, and that's what Jim's talking about. Sometimes you're going to find that these things just, you know, they don't work, and it's because credentials weren't set correctly. So use that test. Okay. You know, set the credentials, use the test on the patch status page, and make sure it's working. Um, updating the agent. Sometimes the agent's just old. Remember, Kaseya doesn't update its agents automatically. All right, so go, you know, go back to the agent tab and go to uh, upgrade version here, and it says update agent, and look at it. You can see, look, I'm 6003 here, and everybody else is 60010. So if I'm all of a sudden having a weird problem with that machine and everybody else is okay, hey, let's go in here, let's grab this, force an update, and hit update in agent and force it to install the 60010. And the force update, even if it is at the current version, will reinstall the current uh, package. Right. Or the and current agent. Kaseya so doesn't it's... see this as being out of date because it only sees it out of date when the third number or higher changes. Okay. The, the little like minor changes that are here, it doesn't think they're out of date. So it's fine to have 3 and 10. It's not giving you a warning. Had we upgraded to service pack 1, this would have been 6.0.1. 
or eventually the SAS server is going to be 6.1, as soon as you went into this, it would say there's four agents out of date, and you would just push the updates out. But again, if you're, if you're having trouble patching Peggy and you get in here and see 60010, force the update anyway. Or still force it? Agent. Okay, so just, you just in force case. It just to reinstall it just in case. It won't cause any harm. It might help. Gotcha. Perfect. Good, good advice. All right. So now the next thing, it gets a little, little more nitty-gritty, right? Now you're getting into the, the, the details of how to troubleshoot this. And I'm going to go through these a little bit fast just so we can, you know, kind of try to stay on schedule because I'm sure we could sit here and talk about, you know, all the, all the individual stuff. So running patch, you know, running patch scan and automatic updates manually and then, you know, checking the logs, you know, seeing what's going on. So, you know, some of these, you know, for example, when you look at the log files, this is going to be your script logs. And you're going to see, you know, a good scan looks like this. You know, basically it's gone through and done these different scans and everything is a success. A bad scan is you're going to see things, you know, where there's going to be little errors here. You know, scan check failed. So it's trying to find it from another data source. Um, this could happen if Windows Auto Update's not running on the machine. You know, it's trying to pull it down from another source. And even though it completed, it may still have issues. So the, the solution to that is to make sure that Windows Auto Update um, is running, but not, and we'll, 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 hopefully we'll have a few minutes at the end. I want to talk about the Windows Auto Update setting to, so that you can turn it off um, where you're actually not updating, but it's still running. Okay. And you're looking, at, you're looking at the agent procedure logs to look at problems with the scan, download, and part of the, the component. So is it a problem with it with actually scanning the machine or actually downloading the patch? You're not going to see why a patch failed. It's just going to say execute, which we'll get to. Later.